Before I get to the meat and potatoes of this video, I need to clear up something first. In my previous video, I referred to myself as Vengeance from Vengeful Gaming. Unfortunately, I didn't do my research, and I noticed that there were other channels with that name. So my new name going forward with the channel will be The Vengeful Vadim. I made sure to update the previous video's description to point this out as well. Anyways, onto the video. CMT's SBV3 has been out for a few days now, and I managed to play through each of the six released missions, and I have to say, I'm blown away with what I have experienced. Calling this a mod is drastically underselling this campaign extravaganza. It never crossed my mind with what I was playing was a game made from a near 15 year old engine, especially with the graphical overhaul that went into this mod, along with the plethora of new game mechanics that are featured here. It blows my mind how gorgeous this game looks, running on such an old engine platform. It really does feel like its own entry in the Halo series, a game that, like I said in my previous video, could very well be its own retail product if CMT had the rights to sell this as a purchasable title. The culmination of gameplay elements from Halos 1, 2, 3, Reach, ODST, and Wars, combined with some of the more original content that they've created, creates a Halo experience unlike any I've ever played. Each feature in this mod feels believable, and could very well exist in the Halo canon. CMT also managed to resurrect previously cut content that was meant to be in the main series of games and successfully made all of it work tremendously well. I can't wait to discuss what I've experienced with you all, and it's going to take a while. So make yourself a sandwich, grab some apple juice, take off all your clothes, and get comfy everyone, because I'm going to talk about everything. The weapons, vehicles, equipment, enemy types, and the levels. Nothing is going to be left out in this extensive overview of SPV3. No more wasting time, let's dive into the true swan song to the Halo franchise. SPV3 features a highly diverse weapon tag set with each tool of destruction carving a niche for itself in the sandbox, something CMT diligently made sure to hammer down on. Each and every weapon in the mod has its own purpose, and none of them feel too similar to one another. While you could still very well roll through a mission with just two weapons, I wouldn't recommend doing so. There's no universally good weapon in this mod like the Halo 2 Battle Rifle or the Halo CE Pistol. Switching weapons with new ones is the key for survival here. Starting with the pistol weapons, the Magnum takes inspiration from its Halo Reach counterpart where it has an 8 round magazine as well as a 2 times magnification scope. You can fire the weapon as fast as you can pull a trigger, but at the cost of a reduction in accuracy. As with most UNSC weaponry, rounds for the Magnum aren't very effective against shields and perform much better against flesh and armor. It works best at nabbing headshots from close to medium ranges. This distinguishes itself from the BR, DMR, and Carbine weapons included in the mod in that it doesn't work very well at longer ranges but excels in closer engagements. Moving over to the Covenant side, there are three variants of the Plaza Pistol in this game. We have our standard green Plaza Pistol that does what you expect it to do, but thanks to the power of open sauce, the program needed to run this mod, it now has its modern features of slowly losing power the longer you charge the weapon, as well as getting the ability to disable vehicles with its charge shot, two features that didn't make it into the main series until Halo 3. The Brute Plaza Pistol is a new weapon in the Halo universe that shoots multiple bolts of plasma as well as a charge shot that launches a ball of fire that acts as a devastating area of effect that gradually weakens the target. Its primary fire does overheat pretty quickly within 4-5 to five shots however, so use those shots wisely. It's very fun to use, and is probably one of the best non-explosive measures of dispatching groups of jackals. Our one Halo 5 aspect I mentioned earlier makes it into the mod in the form of the Void's Tear, a wreck weapon found in Halo 5's Warzone mode. Like its Halo 5 counterpart, its charge shot shoots a concentrated ball of energy that sucks nearby's enemies into it, which is basically like firing a gravity grenade which I'll talk about later. These are quite hard to find, only found by high ranking elites. The way to have him pull out the Void's Tear is to take his shield out, which will enrage him, and he'll switch his sword out to the weapon we're looking for. Once he has it out, kill him to pick it up. So we have two Needler variants in this mod. Our standard one is just like the one in Combat Evolved, which in my opinion is nothing special and not that great. It's good against stationary targets, but has a hard time tracking moving enemies, just like its old one. However, it does have a nice reload animation that I greatly prefer over just shaking the damn thing to acquire new needles. The Brute Shredder, on the other hand, is probably one of my new favorite Halo weapons of all time. This thing is just so damn fun to use. Lore-wise, this replaces the Brute Spiker in favor of a weapon that truly blends Brutish and Covenant technology together in a fucked up romance that spells doom to anyone that opposes it. Like the Needler, it's a fully automatic weapon that has the ability to super combine targets when enough needles penetrate the body, but the way it goes about doing that is so much different from the original Needler. The Shredder's needles don't track their target, and they'll fire in the exact direction you aim the weapon at at all times, and the super combine only happens on targets without a shield. So if you're firing this thing at an elite, you'll have to bring the shield down first to trigger the explosion. This is reminiscent of the way the needle rifle works in Halo Reach, which has needles that function the exact same way. The Shredder is one of the few Covenant weapons that work better against armor or flesh than shielding. 
This weapon is very strong, has a satisfying and believable sound effect, and it just looks fantastic overall. I highly recommend picking one of these bad boys up. As we switch gears here, we move on to the automatic class of weaponry. We have two variants of the SMG. There's a standard variant we all know and love that does devastating amount of damage at close range, and right after that is the suppressed SMG that features a 3x magnification scope. The suppressor on this weapon actually works, and has the ability to conceal the user from enemy detection as long as the surrounding enemies don't see you making the kill. Two variants of the iconic assault rifle also exist. We have our standard version that works just like its Halo Reach counterpart in terms of how the weapon bloom is handled, but there's a difference here. The weapon starts out with a pretty slow rate of fire, and it'll pick up speed the longer you hold down the trigger. This will make the weapon more inaccurate at longer ranges, however. The second variant has a mounted grenade launcher. It functions the same as its standard counterpart in terms of primary fire, while a secondary grenade launcher gives the user a viable tool to take down shade turrets and enemies with a lot of health. Note that the grenade launcher removes your ability to throw your standard grenades, so if you want to use those, you'll have to switch weapons. You also can't use your primary fire while reloading your grenade launcher, unlike an SBV-1, which means you'll need to use it in a safe area to reload with no confrontation. One other notable feature the assault rifle has is its ability to zoom in, similar to its Halo 5 counterpart. Note that it's not advised to use fully automatic fire when in this mode due to the loss of accuracy. Switching to the Covenant once again, we have the standard blue plasma rifle. It works quite well at close to medium range like its combat evolved counterpart, and melts through energy shields like a knife through butter, as you would expect it to. The blue plasma rifle makes a return in this mod as well, but it functions differently from its Halo 2 counterpart. Instead of firing faster than the standard blue plasma rifle, it fires slower and does more damage. Our close range weapon of the mod is a shotgun. It behaves similar to its Halo CE variant where it can hold its own at a reasonable range, but it can't engage targets nearly as far. Something unique to this shotgun compared to its brethren in the main series games is its ammo count, 8 as opposed to either 12 or 6. This is a solid middle ground that balances out the utility the shotgun brings to CQB. Moving on to the mid range weapons, we have the battle rifles. First is your standard battle rifle, followed by the suppressed variant that works very well during stealthy sections of the game, followed by CMT's iconic grenade launcher variant that makes its debut all the way back to SBV-1 and makes a return here in SBV-3. The battle rifles, especially the variant with the grenade launcher, are among my favorite weapons to use in this mod because of one interesting feature they possess. When you zoom in with the BR, the firing mode turns to a single shot as opposed to a 3 round burst, which will go back to the burst mode when you unzoom. You also have the ability to toggle back the 3 round burst even when you're zoomed in if you prefer the firing of the weapon that way. This feature was shown during Halo 2's E3 2004 multiplayer showcase, but was eventually cut from the game, and was later implemented to the light rifle featured in Halos 4 and 5. It was a piece of cut content that I greatly missed on the battle rifle specifically, and I was hyped to hear that it returned in full to SPV-3. While it seems redundant to have the DMR in this game along with the three battle rifle variants, make no mistake, the DMR has a distinctive niche over the BRs in that it performs much better at long range. The shots land much more accurately from a distance and its zoom level is higher. CMT tradition of the DMR is probably the best one out there right now, more so than any of the variants we saw in the main series games. It actually functions like a mini sniper rifle and because of that, it handles poorly in close quarters combat, something the DMRs in the main games can do relatively well in. The carbine makes its appearance in the mod as the Covenant's answer to the battle rifle and the DMR, but the way it functions makes it drastically different from its main series counterparts. Gone is the reloadable magazine in favor of a battery charge, much like the ones the plasma weaponry have. When firing this weapon, there's no need to worry about reloading. In its place, however, you have to be wary of overheating in the battery life. You can fire as fast as you can pull a trigger, but in doing so, you risk an overheat. I wish this was how the carbine truly functioned in the main game, since it makes it look less like a BR DMR clone, and more like its own class of weapon. The UNSC sniper rifle functions like you'd expect it to, with not too many notable changes to its usability. There is, however, a suppressed variant that has the same damage model and functionality, but it also allows you for more tactical approaches to missions. Like the suppressed SMG in the battle rifle, and conceals your position as long as the enemy doesn't directly see you. Making its return from Halo Reach is the Focus Rifle. This is a much better sandbox choice over the Beam Rifle as it's drastically different in usability than the UNSC Sniper Rifle. As expected, if you've played Halo Reach, it fires a constant beam of energy over a long distance and can melt through shields and armor. To balance the weapon out to prevent it from being too broken, the beam initially fires all over the place before stabilizing after a sustained trigger pull. The rocket launcher received no notable changes to its combat evolved counterpart, but it's still the destructive powerhouse it always was. If you're familiar with SBV-1, the rocket was able to lock on the targets like its Halo 2 counterpart, but that's no longer the case with SBV-3. Returning to the Brute's arsenal, the Brute shot does phenomenally well against crowds of enemies. It behaves just like Halo 3's version of the weapon, where the grenades detonate on impact rather than bouncing all over the place just like in Halo 2. 
Speaking of grenades, two new types have been added to coexist with the traditional frag and plasma grenades. The gravity grenade explodes into an electrical void that sucks in objects and even enemies, just like the void's tier from earlier. The ragdoll physics that coincide from the use of this grenade are among the funniest things I've seen in Halo yet. The second new grenade type is the cluster grenade. Upon detonation, the explosion covers a small area with tiny fuel rod bombs that work very well against the crowd. Hold on to your butts, ladies and gentlemen, because now we're getting to the fun stuff. These next pieces of content are things we've been asking for the Halo devs to include in the game since the development of Halo 2. And finally, after 14 years of waiting, CMT answered our prayers. First off, the Hunter's weapons are now usable and have three variations. We have the standard single shot fuel rod gun, the assault beam that was exclusive to Halos 2 and 3, along with a new variant called the Shade Cannon that fires a Shade Turret's projectiles at a rapid succession. All three of these weapons are highly viable tools of destruction that will mow the enemy down in mass when used correctly. We can finally use the Jackal Shields in Halo Combat. The Jackal Shield gives the player a solid personal defense when attempting to move up in a firefight, blocking small arms fire from the front. You can even melee with the damn thing. It has notable weaknesses, however. It can only block damage from the front. Your flank and your rear are still exposed and there's nothing you can do except you turn your shield around to block the incoming projectiles. There's also no way to engage targets from any range that isn't in melee distance, which means you'll have to expose yourself by switching to your other weapon. Lastly, it can be kind of difficult to see through this shield since it's so bright and right in your face. It's almost like staring into the fucking sun at times. Luckily, visor mode helps with dimming the light and aiding you into your target acquisition. Well, that's all for now. Stay tuned for part 2 where I'll cover the vehicles, equipment, and enemy types that this mod has to offer. And then in part 3, I'll cover the campaign missions themselves where I'll discuss my thoughts on how they've been executed. This is the Vengeful Vadim, and I'll see you on the great journey.